Welcome back to Metroid Fusion. Last time, we cleared out the map, collected every item there is to collect. That is 100%. So a funny thing of note about the item collection in this game. Because the actual upgrades, the proper upgrades, are mandatory, they are not actually counted in the item collection percentage. So it's very easy to do, or I shouldn't say very easy, it's um, easy to do a 0% item of this run because you'll still have all of these items right here, even in a 0% run. You just won't have any missile expansions or power bomb expansions or energy tanks. Um, I'm trying to think. There was something else I wanted to add on top of that. Oh, right. Um, also, the items that you do collect, like these right here, the items, that, the items that you do collect are actually unlocked in a pre-designated order. And I think if you manage to sequence break, as far as I know, it's actually impossible to sequence break, aside from one thing that the developers kind of accounted for, um, which I'll speak about later. Um, if you do manage to sequence break and, like, go to... Okay, I'm just going to make some stuff up because I kind of forget some of the item progression. So if you're supposed to get, like, I don't know, beat one boss and get the ice beam, beat another boss, get the plasma beam, if you skip the ice beam boss and beat the plasma beam boss, you get the ice beam. Like... It's programmed around you collecting items in that specific order. But anyway, uh, we are at the end of the game. Everything's been explored, we've been everywhere, we've collected everything, and our orders right now are very simply, get to a navigation room. Um... Why? K. Oh, wonderful. So I kind of, I kind of like that serious as this may be, it still feels like Adam is trying to, like, trying to give us helpful advice. He's trying to take care of us, not just being a heartless machine. Like, even the... Even, like, right here, it kind of feels like the Federation's coming. Like, this is a thing that's happening. And it, like, in that... Not trying to, like, domineer over Samus, but in genuinely trying to help, saying you should honestly just leave quietly. That's, the, that's what I take from it. I feel like I was getting support data for a pretty lengthy amount of time. When did I stop getting support data? Yeah, diffusion missile I got. What did I get before diffusion missile? Is it power bombs? Or ice missiles.
Hey. Hey. I suppose we never told the computer that we had named it. For all we know, they could live in space. Or survive in a chunk of this ship that goes flying off somewhere. Kind of eager to jump on death there, too, Samus. Don't tell them I told you this. Doors are open, the world is our oyster. And we're off to save the universe. Um, so you cannot go back. After that cutscene, after watching that cutscene, these doors are locked and you cannot go back. I do not know what possessed them to make this decision. This is the perfect time to open up the world for you so you can explore and go collect items in preparation for, an end, for the end. This is the perfect time. And all they had to do was not lock these doors. Uh, you are completely locked in, too. Not only is the room on the far side of the recharge room locked in all of these elevator rooms, but also any rooms that take you off the beaten path up on the main deck are also locked. You cannot go back once you watch that cutscene. And that makes the item collection phase a little... I want to say annoying, but a little meta, almost. Like, uncomfortably meta. You have to run around avoiding navigation rooms like the plague, because every navigation room will trigger this cutscene.
So even when you go back to the main deck to collect the couple items up there, you have to be careful, don't go into any of the navigation rooms. And that feels so weird. Like, from a gameplay perspective and from a narrative perspective. Like, I've... And I'm, I'm pretty sure most people probably agree with me, given some of the comments. But I feel like if there were any flat-out objective flaws in this game, it's that they locked these doors. So, that aside, though, um, we can move along. So the cutscene here was one of the first it was one of the first times Samus spoke out loud. We've seen her speaking in monologue several times. And the monologues were always very clinical, very matter of fact. Um, and even the one time that Samus spoke when we were down in the restricted area, she said very little, and it still had that almost that serious tone, that serious quiet tone to it. This is the first and really only cutscene in the game where Samus speaks at length, showing personality. And compared to every other time that Samus has spoken, it feels really out of place. Like, it doesn't feel like the same person that's been speaking up until now. To very suddenly be so aggressive and insulting of the Federation, and so quickly eager to kill herself to take care of this. It feels a little weird, honestly. And... I also feel like Adam's reveal? I don't know. I don't feel like Adam's reveal was that bad. I don't feel like it was that bad. Um, despite that Sam has mentioned that it felt like the machine was pretty cold and uncaring, I feel like I still got some emotion. It still wanted to take care of Samus. But it also had its orders and was doing what it had to do. And it was only this point here where it finally said, it's in everyone's best interest if I break orders. I do feel a little like the Any Objections Lady came maybe a little early. But then I don't know how much time they really would have had to... My brain stopped. I don't know how much time they really would have had to squeeze that in anywhere after this, so maybe this was the best time for it. And honestly, even as far as um, Samus' dialogue here goes, uh, recall that it has been said that um, uh, Sakamoto doesn't really care how we interpret the story or anything in the Metroid games. So... This could very easily be a localization issue, and it just wasn't translated super well. And he just doesn't care that that was the case. Uh, so somebody asked before, so if um, Sakamoto doesn't care about the translation, then what did these cutscenes actually say? What actually happened? And the thing with localization is... Overall... It was probably about the same thing. Um, it's a matter of nuance and kind of the impression that you get. It could be the difference between maybe putting an exclamation point at the end of everything Sam has said in those cutscenes, when maybe the original intention was not to have the same emotion conveyed that doing that happened in here. Just as an example, I don't know if that actually happened or what. Um, but a very small change like that can change how you f how interpret something, how you feel like something happened or was said, even if 
at the end of the day, very little genuinely changed. And this is why good localization is very important. So, um, I say it felt a little weird, but I don't... Maybe that was a localization issue. I don't know. And I've always already ranted about locking this in to everything. Uh, which, by the way, was probably the final nail in the coffin of my original playthrough and, and me going, look, I'm just too flustered by this point. Um, between Nightmare and the security robot and I died to Ridley Prey like four times and the gold pirates and all of the cutscenes with Adam where it felt like you were... I, I think I mentioned this last time, or maybe the time before, where it feels like you're actively being ridiculed and insulted for doing something that you had absolutely no choice but to do, and Samus said nothing about it. Did nothing about it. Um... Like, so by the end of that, that was also me just going like, look, I've just been insulted repeatedly for things that I had no choice but to do. And then finally I get up here and I'm like, good. I'm not going to go any higher. This is the perfect time to go back and actually check into everything. And I look down a couple different elevators going, hmm, yeah, maybe there's an item here I need. And as soon as I try it, I hit that wall and went. What, what do I do from here? I knew that wall existed, but it feels like such a bad spot to put it. I was, I was thinking maybe something like it's up here. Maybe there's a navigation room up here or something you get an additional little bit of information on. Or something. It felt so... It feels so weird to put it down there. When that is the perfect time. Yeah, you see this door is closed, so you can't go back down. Even if you wanted to. Like, if you wanted to try to backdoor your way in. That is not where I'm going. There was something else. Oh, what was it? There was something else. Something else I wanted to add on to the end of this. I think it's not an ob- I mean, this isn't the point that I was trying to make, but it's also not an obvious lockout. Like, you're not in some end gamey area. Like, I feel like they gave you the warning of this is end game coming up once you got in the navigation room. So, like, that told me, okay, yeah, you go up here and, like, save in the save room or whatever, and maybe you'll be at, past the point of no return. But as soon as you enter that nav- like, as soon as you, like, stand on that navigation pad, that's your point of no return. And it just feels like there's no warning. Anyway, I've ranted enough. Okay, we're not going that way. And we're not going this way. And there was an explosion. Ah, heck! Where are you, buddy? Hey, how'd you jump like that? Well, we all knew this fight was coming. Hey. I think what's funny is you can screw attack into each other. And you, like, both kind of take some damage and bounce off. Oh, she's wiggling. Oh, 
Oh, hi. Uh, ooh, that's not good. I don't like it here. Oh, I don't like it here! That is an ice beam! Gimme that! Gimme that! Genetically- no, come back! No, genetically modify me to be able to use the ice beam to fight my- despite my weakness to cold. Come back! Oh crap, I gotta do what I came here for. Propulsion sequence Oh boy, let's go! Ooh, got that escape music playing. Good stuff. Um, so I like having- oh, no, I guess I'm not. I should've gone in there before I tri triggered that! Should've stopped by a recharge room, but I didn't, and here I am. Is there a recharge room on the way? There sure is. Okay, give me my juice back. Thanks. Okay, it's only been 30 seconds, I'm down the first elevator and round in a corner. This is where I go, right? I think this is where I go? No, it's not. I have more corners to round! Three minutes is kind of a long time. There's a gray door that closed behind me, so I'm not going back. There too. What happened here? Uh, butts. No, sir, I don't like it. No, ooh, jeez. You never hit that hard in Metroid 2. What the crap? Ice beam right there. Get that ice beam right there in the chest. I mean, yeah, if you one shot at me, you're gonna one shot that. No, gimme it! Gimme it! Yeah, boy! No, get back up. Okay. Yeah, get that ice beam! Right in the but right in the chest! Hey, look, that's unfair. Yeah, back up. Yeah, you heard me. There's our ship. It flew off to safety because this thing came here and started causing problems. Let's get out of here.
Look, honest to goodness, it's super easy to just lie. Who's gonna who's gonna fib on us? There's two of us. Everything else blew up. Don't go start, don't go start bringing, like, ghosts and crap into this. That's not how this game works. Never mind, there were ghosts in Prime. Yeah, look at those little idiots. So cute. Oh my goodness. And that is it. We did it. We beat Metroid Fusion. Metroid Fusion has been a long time coming on this channel. And that's partially because it's been known for a long time that I'm a big Metroid fan. But also that I'm not a fan of Metroid Fusion, and I've never really had the chance to elaborate on that. And honestly, I've always known how many people like Metroid Fusion, which has also made me hesitant to want to elaborate on that. I'm glad that I did these videos, though, because I think I have a much better understanding of Fusion than I had before, and I think the greatest conclusion that I came, that I came to after all of this is Metroid Fusion is not trying to be Super Metroid. It's trying to do its own thing. And if I can look at the game and read it, interpret it that way, I see it in a completely different light. And I think relating the game to Super Metroid is... I don't think it's entirely fair to Fusion, but I do think it's a completely understandable thing for someone to do. Because people who played Fusion generally came in one of two crowds. Either Fusion was your first Metroid game, or before Fusion you played Super, and you waited however many long years for the next Metroid game. And it's very hard in that regard not to be disappointed because you're waiting for so long with such anticipation for the sequel to Super. But that wasn't what Fusion was trying to be. And I feel like, having played it again, I actually had a good time. I've mentioned all... I, I've mentioned already, I looked forward to recording each week. I've gotten... I've adapted to at least a reasonable degree, to the controls, to the gameplay, to the expectations of the game. And I've had a pretty good time playing it. I've grown comfortable playing it. I, I do still think Fusion is uh, kind of a flawed game, though. It's certainly better than I thought, it, than I remembered it being. I remembered a lot of flaws with the game that ended up not even being there, really. Uh, thinking back on it, I remember being handheld the entire game through. Every step of the way being told, this is where you need to go, this is what you're going to get, and it just being a straight path to get there. And that wasn't what it was at all. 
very frequently they would tell you maybe this is where you need to go but it wouldn't be as direct to get there or even once you did get there you would be trapped and you'd have to find your way back on your own in a completely off the map explorative kind of way there was so much more exploration and poking my head into the unknown and finding my own path than I remember there being. I also remember way more dialogue, way more story, way more walls of text, and there wasn't. I feel like maybe the very intro of the game had a couple walls of text, but that was necessary to get the game going, to explain where you were, what was going on, to set the pace, to set the tone. Once you got into the game, that all but stopped. That a lot of the time when they... Because I also remember you being locked out of a lot of areas in the game, and that barely happened at all. Uh, they would occasionally lock you out when maybe you got a power-up and then you're locked into this new little area that you've got to explore and get your way out of but by the time you get your way out of that you kind of have free reign again i i've mentioned twice now without going to details but i do still think the game is f flawed i do still think there are some problems with the game here and there um for one i think the sax was very underutilized you ran into the thing all of like three times for the game making it out to be this real big bad. I feel like some power-ups were maybe um, lined a little weirdly. It feels like the beam power-ups were maybe back-loaded a little too much. Um, I feel like the diffusion missiles were also very underutilized. I think it was a really neat weapon. I think it was a real neat, real neat attack. But I feel like it was very underutilized. I feel like, it, I think if anything, you get out of the last couple of things that I've pointed out, I, I feel like flow could have been a little bit better. From one point to the next, working your way through. But it was still enjoyable. It was still enjoyable. Um, none of those are like game-breaking, horribly bad, whatever. Um, I never felt like the game was too obscenely difficult or you couldn't tell what you were doing, but I also never felt like you were too streamlined and, like, forced down one path. Like, overall, I feel like I can actually leave it with a much better impression of Fusion than I went into it with. I also feel like it is not the exact kind of Metroidvania that I want to play. But that doesn't mean I can't enjoy it. I feel like what I want out of a Metroidvania is very, very much so the exploration. That's what I want. And in turn, what's really important to me is finding cool places to explore. I want to get to that new area and just be taken aback by where it is that I am. And the music, the aesthetics, the mood, everything of what's laid out before me that then makes me want to go out and look around and explore this area and see what there is. And I feel like that's why the environments, the moods, and even the more methodical gameplay style of Super is probably why I better fit that game. But that certainly doesn't mean that I can't enjoy Fusion, and I'm glad that I went back and played it, because I have a much better opinion of it now than I did before. And I want to thank all of you for being real nice to me the whole time around. Because I was genuinely expecting a lot of people that absolutely love Fusion to just tear me apart every time I said something, or critiqued the game in any way. But for the most part, everybody has been very supportive and understanding even when you disagree so thank all of you for being the awesome group of people that you all are really uh, so before we wrap up the two 
most common questions that I got over the course of this was, A, am I going to do the Prime games? And not immediately. The point of this series was to do Metroid 1, 2, 3, and 4 in preparation for Metroid 5. Dread coming out. That doesn't mean I won't do them at some point. I think I would like to, but I, ha I did not have any intention of doing the Prime games as part of this series. Which leads, of course, into the next question, will I be doing Dread immediately? And though Dread is out by this point, I will not. I've found generally playing new games blind on this channel just doesn't work out all that well, and I want to be able to enjoy the game on my own terms first. So what I have for you is a Halloween series coming up next, and then we'll be following that up with a proper look into Dread. So please look forward to it. Until next time, everyone.